All right, we'll call the uh, City of Bel Air Beach Citizens Advisory Committee uh, today, Tuesday, November 22nd, 2022, 5 p.m. to order. And can I request approval of the agenda? I'll make the motion. Second. Mark, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. So um, today we're going to talk about, um, so last time we got together, Kyle had asked us to consider looking at the um, uh, referendum requirement that required the city to keep a million dollar cash uh, balance for hurricane emergency funds. And so we agreed that it would be something to explore and get to work. So Kyle and I went and had some phone calls. Um, talked to South State Bank, which has done our last two bond issues. They did the Bellevue Estates undergrounding bond issue, and they did our stormwater bond issue, and Chris Rowe, our bond counsel. And as it turns out, municipal lines of credit are not desirable. So to put it in perspective, being a former commercial lender myself, so a half a million dollar line of credit was going to cost us 1.5% upfront, a 1.5% annual unused fee, prime rate is 7% if we funded it, and legal fees of twelve thousand five hundred to be repeated every five years. Yeah, so they didn't want. So they don't, they don't want that business. They don't want. Yeah. So they did throw out that hey, you know, if you've got some projects, maybe it makes sense to do a bond issue. And then that interest rate came out to at the time they gave us a range about four and a half percent, no upfront fees on the borrowed money, ten year, fifteen year, whatever the term is. Yeah. So. Kyle and I went um, back. Kyle did some homework, and I'll let Kyle walk through the homework. So we looked at what, if we roll forward um, the next four or five years of stormwater projects, and then um, and then the payoff on this building was now down to two thousand dollars. So it was significantly higher. So the make whole provision, since the ten year treasury is up, is made our prepay. Negligible. So we owe 480, so call it 482 mm -hmm. uh, plus accrued interest. Um, so I think if we were, and we've got about a million to of cash. So in my mind, I'm like, we'll take 480 out of the million to of cash, pay the debt down, apply the rest to the projects, and then finance the balance. And so, Kyle, do you want to walk through the projects? Sure. And, so uh, we started with the Gulf Boulevard undergrounding project, uh, which we proposed. Uh, taking care of phase one and phase two to the city council in September and um, kind of laid out the total cost of that project per uh, fiscal year and um, the numbers came out with our with our penny for Pinellas reimbursement up to, to fiscal year 2025 we came out at about 1.3 million um, shy of the total project cost uh, the idea when we proposed the council was that uh, our 802,000 uh, ARPA money that we got from the federal government could be uh, spent on stormwater projects and in turn free up money um, to pay for the underground, and leaving us in the uh, deficit of about um, 400, 400 to 500,000 um, dollars that, that kind of got the conversation going of why we were looking at the, uh, you know, the line of credit for the, uh, the million dollars for hurricane the emergency fund. So this is that, those numbers laid out, um, and that was from the, the underground project. And, and there's some expectations that this penny for Pinellas will be expanded going into 26? There, there is, um, there's expectations that that's possible. I have some good news, actually. Um, there's been some adjustments. The, we were able to earn more credits, and you guys are actually um, the first to find out, we were able to get more credits from Duke on um, both phases. So in total, um, let me the numbers. so the original phase one for Duke undergrounding was supposed to be 1.129 1, uh, million, mm -hmm. and now we're down on to the actual invoice is gonna be 966. 966? Yeah, 100, sorry, 966,691 dollars. So the phase two was at two, about $2 million, a little over, and now it's coming down to 1.75. Um, 
So the total savings um, from our original numbers and credits, um, they gave us $443,000 worth of credits. Wow. That, so that actually knocks down the money, our deficit for the total project, we're down to $806,000, um, which our ARPA money was eight hundred two. Yeah, so by allocating what we so, were going to do for stormwater, yeah, it take pretty the ARPA money, put it to the stormwater, so we take that 100 out of the budget, and basically we're break even. We're about break even yeah. now. Yeah. So that's good news. Yeah, that's real good news. So, just got that on the uh, how, how 17th. How much was that ARPA money? So ARPA money is uh, eight hundred and two thousand yeah. dollars. So good. Well, four hundred one and two. Almost eight hundred three, but got four hundred one, and then we get the other, right. We comes in two payments, or did do right now we got it all. Okay. Yeah, we just have to apply it. I'm getting with Randy uh, to do some form of a resolution to dedicate the money to a fund. Okay. Um, but that that's one of the requirements, which would be dedicating it to a stormwater project fund. And that's that COVID money, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so that's the undergrounding. And then the next page is the timeline, that, which I revised, I think, in October for the uh, stormwater projects. It shows which ones we've completed. We're currently working on 12th and 13th Street, um, which kind of spurred along this, this idea of trying to knock out and doing a bond issue and get these projects done. Is that we, during the bidding process of 12th and 13th, we came about 200 thousand uh, dollars under budget so the estimated cost for that project was much lower um, with the increases in um, materials and transportation fees and just labor in general so we're seeing these numbers go up we don't know if they're going to keep going up um, I did talk to some of the uh, contractors um, that we, we currently work with and they can't guarantee that the numbers are gonna go up, they're gonna stay the same. I know it's very hard to predict, but in doing the analysis on the next page for the um, analysis of future stormwater projects, what I did here was um, I took the, the original project estimates. Um, they were all multiplied this budget year by 1.3 um, to try to deal with the cost of inflation. Uh, I took those numbers that we now currently are, are budgeting for those projects. I took, I calculated out all the resurfacing that needs to be done in the area of those projects and added that to the project cost as well as the valley curb um, for each area. And you'll see, like if you go to the resurfacing section after the BMP, which is the stormwater projects, if you go to the resurfacing, you'll see the streets th that are surrounding each of these projects and um, if you go below that, you're going to see the condition on 100 point scale. That's from our street index. So it shows, you know, these we're getting up into the the yellows, which were, um, you know, above 50 percent. So we're taking care of where where our streets are very deteriorated, just surrounding these projects. And then, um, you know, you'll see like uh, when we get to 9th Street, um, you're kind of taking care of the ones in that area, Harbor, the Cedar, Spruce, and Palm. But this will, this will get us all kind of like in the yellow of our street index, where I think we'll be to a point where we can kind of reevaluate the whole city in general. So we're covering the resurfacing that needs to be done in these projects. We're covering the curb work. So anything that's getting resurfaced is getting the, co the new curbs put in. Um, that's all been estimated. Um, I totaled it up across the, across the board um, and got numbers for the total project costs that include the resurfacing and curbing in the area. Um, and then laid it out with the money that we currently have saved in our capital budget um, and what money we need if we were going to do this, say this year, the next five years of the project. And if you compare it back to the uh, timeline, you're gonna see this gets us all the way up through 14th through 16th Street. And it, it, the next project after that is the Marina which had a BMP in our, um, in our master plan, but when you look at the marina, that's, it's not really something that I think is a high priority you know, on the master plan. Um, so in drawing all those numbers together, we, uh, we have right now, currently this budget year, we have about $1.2 million that is saved 
for these projects. Um, the deficit for all the projects in the future that we're looking at five years is about 2.47, and that's where we're, we're um, getting that loan amount. Well, at least on this report, I wrote the loan amount being 3.7, but if you go to the last page, you're gonna find um, the big picture of everything, which is gonna be, and again, this puts it with our, our undergrounding credits that we, that we did not know about at the time, it kind of puts us about 3.8 million financing need. Um, but you'll see where we, we laid off paying off the building with the with the uh, early payoff fees, and then you'll see the the funding deficit needed for the uh, stormwater projects off of the last report we looked at, and that's how we we came up with the the overall loan that we're going to need. So are you saying these these numbers represent the current um, so credit from Duke? Yeah, the, these numbers right here do not. Do so not take. Okay. Um, with the new calculation, two seventy-five minus four forty-three in credits. Yeah, yeah. Two million. Four so that puts us at it was eight oh eight hundred six thousand. Right. Seventy-three dollars was so that. Like three four or something like that. Yeah. May I ask a question. Yes. Yeah, Tom. Yeah, Kyle. Uh, I see that doesn't cover every street, and uh, a decision was made which streets to cover and which not. Uh, when you lay out all of the projects for the uh, stormwater uh, and the curbs and the uh, paving. Um, so does that mean these streets that aren't mentioned aren't, aren't in need for the next five years? I would say yes, not in need for the next five years. They're all um, still closer to, I think we're at about like, 65% rating on a 100 point scale. Um, I have, I can send you the report of our current street index. I'm just, if you want to look at where we're at in comparison, um, a lot of it, we've done a lot of streets that needed work through the previous stormwater projects. And um, so the worst streets, I, I would consider the, the yellow condition, um, which is that, that, uh, 51 to 70 points, um, mild wear. Um, after that, you kind of get into the green area of a, a fairly new paved streets. So it would get us in a, in a good shape to definitely cover the uh, five years of resurfacing. Okay. Thank you. I feel confident. Um, and then I read all these numbers by Heather, our, uh, our finance, um, officer and she just wanted to make clear um, and this is something that we need to, to talk with the uh, the um, Chris Rowe and, um, and South State that um, because we're working out of two funds we're working out of the capital projects fund and the stormwater fund we need to get the loan when we get that loan we need to be able to divide it up per fund and then pay it back per fund so we just got to have that all kind of okay. out but other than that, she thought everything looked good. What would be uh, stormwater and what would be so storm water, general? Stormwater is going to be your, um, your BMP, your project cost, and your valley curve. And then capital is going to be your undergrounding and your resurfacing. Assuming this goes through, I'm looking at this legal fee. What all does the attorney, city attorney, have to do for that kind of money? So that is not the city, city attorney. So um, the twelve to thousand, the fifteen thousand to eighteen thousand. Chris Rowe is with a uh, law firm Brian Miller and Olive, oh. and they're actually uh, preparing a tax exempt bond issue. Oh, 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 oh. So there's, okay. there's works, there's, there's got to be hearings that are involved, and um, there's a lot of 
different steps that go through in doing a bond issue. And then the bank, in essence, buys the bond. Okay. So they're the sole holder of the bond. And that's what I was ask. What's the difference between a loan and a bond issue? And that's, that's the difference? The, well, so, uh, and they make it tax exempt. So, you know, there's rules that can make what's called a bank qualified tax exempt credit facility. So, what the bank gets the benefit is, is they'll reduce the interest rate by what their tax is. So, your corporate tax rates today are like 25, 26 percent. They used to be 40. So you used to get a, a much bigger discount from whatever the current bond rate is. So the t current uh, tenure treasury today was running 475, I think, mm -hmm. um, right around there. So this is basically getting it um, at, at the current treasury is what the rate would be. I, I think um, it pulled back a little bit today. I mean, I, I would be pushing Gary for back to his original comment of 4.5%. You know, I just did the math on the lower dollar amount. It would bring the annual payment down to 482, 138, um, but with that 433,000 savings. From 537. From 537. You know, I think that's really comfortable within the range. We've historically spent between five and seven, budgeted between five and 700,000 a year for stormwater mm -hmm. and capital projects. So it's within what we've historically done. Yeah. Then, then some savings. So then we would, we would be saving, um, like this next year, our debt service would be 160 in principal and 21 in interest. So we'd be saving that 181,000. We'd just reallocate that from the budget to this payment. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, uh, the, in, in the uh, Kyle and having conversations, um, believes that you know the mobile if we do these one offs, you know, our mobilization expense would probably be in excess of a half a million dollars. But he's gotten guidance that you could cut two hundred and fifty of that out. So what I'm trying to back into how can we like cover, cover what savings costs. are we gonna get to cover you know, bef before I calculated interest it was a million one in interest over ten years. And then the beauty is is this is, has uh, it's a, a one percent prepay up to five over the first five after years, five but after five years, years the prepay goes away. Which the twenty year bond that we're in for this building, the prepay never went away. Yeah, and you said earlier that this building, the debt on the on this building is how much now? Four eighty. Four eighty. So it's it's one hundred sixty thousand a year for three years, yeah. plus the interest. And the way the interest rate is, it it just works out. It's twenty one thousand. 14,000 and 7,000 in interest if you ran this out uh, through the amortizing terms. So there's definitely an advantage to going the bond route than paying off the building and using it as collateral for the annual expenditure for the hurricane. underground, I mean for the hurricane, yeah. to guarantee it. Yeah. You know, saying we're always yeah. going to keep this in the fund. And, um, the good news, um, underwriting wise, what they look for is, you know, our debt service coverage um, to be one and a half times our non-ad valorem revenue. Mm -hmm. Our non-ad valorem revenue is a million three is what Heather and Kyle came up with on a consistent basis. So we're you know, at the first payment, I haven't done it with this one, but at the first payment, you know, we're at, we're at two point four times, um, so we're we're super strong, and so it will only get better with a, a fifty thousand dollar cheaper payment. Yeah. So. Question. Sure. Sorry. If is there anything the federal government has now that Ian, you know, demolished Fort Myers? Is there anything that they might be doing grants to help us all beach cities get rid of stormwater faster? So NF, what is it, the flood insurance program, NFIP, or the federal? Just something to look into to help give us a little love to help lower the, the That's a great, that'd be something, you know, uh, if, if Kyle, you guys, but yeah. we, the $800,000 we got from the uh, COVID fund yeah. was specifically for stormwater. Okay. So I don't know if FEMA is doing anything in addition post. Nothing's come out recently. Okay. And, and then the let's, I'll shut up. No. If we get money a year from now, 400 grand, we can just apply it to the loan and yeah. take it down right there. There's so. a penalty, but that's okay. okay. Well, I think you could you could still pay someone ahead, yeah. like we did okay. with the bond issues. Yeah. 
uh, uh, with the Bellevue Estate. We yeah. can, if anybody wants to pay theirs off every year, you, you can, can pay down a little bit. Um, yeah. But, okay. I just want to take a look what's happening. The, the uh, exposure right just, We're like, hey, we're trying to help ourselves and get rid of the water. Yeah. Yeah. How about a little love? So, so I'm so, thinking so, there's something should come from all of the discovery work that uh, everyone is doing about the vulnerabilities of the low-lying areas and say, well, if you as a city can do something to improve your vulnerability uh, in case the storm wants to hit here, we'll, we'll give you 50% of the cost to do it. And, you know, to your point, that makes sense. Now, whether it fits into our time frame or not. Well, I say go time frame. I was just saying, have we explored? Maybe we, we should we'll still do it. The, 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 the right. beauty is, is that the balance sheet. I should have brought that tonight. I didn't, but um, we, we've still got good cash reserves. I think you know, our existing cash today, because of some projects already, in, we're we were sitting on six million dollars in liquidity. Um, so that's the million dollar hurricane. Then yeah. we've got you know the reserves we build every year for each of, of the uh, different components, um, and that helps us because typically what happens with the government is if the state or county or federal says, hey, we'll pay for this project, we have to pay for it first, yeah. and then we get reimbursed. Yeah. Yeah. So I think um, you're preserving some liquidity depth. And so I guess the question is, is what what else do we need to work on as the Citizens Advisory Council to decide that we want to present this, if we want to present it, on a, in a workshop to city council? Well, I think it makes a lot of sense, for sure. It, it, with the newer numbers, it even makes more sense. Um, and I don't see where anyone is going to object that if this perpetuates getting all of the stormwater projects done ahead of schedule, which is a good selling point for this reorg financially. So, um, I mean, uh, is there any downside that we're not considering that we should consider? When you accelerate the stormwater projects, right? So, what time frame now are we compressing into? What do you estimate for the loan? Oh. If, we, if we were to go down that, no, he told me specifically. Uh, but you you already threw that number out there. For In two weeks for a term sheet three to five weeks to close. So let's just call it six weeks okay. from the time we tell them to say So no. we get the, the commitment, we start working on the funding um, mm -hmm. for the, with the loan, um, then we just have to, we have to rebid um, or get proposals for the uh, for the engineering involved. And then once we have that all worked out, then we would have to bid the projects. So mm -hmm. and you think reasonably. There may be a discount because we're offering a bigger project, um, but there also may be a point in time when costs start to go down. If you listen, listen to what Washington is telling us today, you know, inflation is going to go away. So, yeah, so how much you well, want to bet on that? If, if we're <laughs> I'm down, just throwing it out there. So what I'm saying is, yeah, yeah I got a project you know, and so it's a bit of a, <clears throat> a, a, a chance there that sure. um, I, I really don't see the labor issue being resolved mm -hmm. in a time frame that we're talking about completing all the projects. Are we saying we could shrink it to less than five years? Yes. No. Yeah. Well, because once we get rolling, um, once we have the project put together, designed, we bid it out. Um, it could be multiple streets at a time getting some portions of the work Yes, done. it's not going to take much longer than okay. any one of our stand standalone projects. To yeah. Do. So what do you think? Time frame? 90 to 120 days. So 90 to 120 days per street? No, um, probably full project. Oh, from design yeah. to completion? Well, no, no, no. I'm saying once the project starts. You know, that would be what the contract So what's the design timeline? <sighs> Engineer probably could get it done. Um, Comfortably, I'd, I'd say at least, I'd say three months, but probably before that. Isn't each street a little different as well? Well, it, it doesn't mean we have a master plan, we have design recommendations, but it doesn't mean that when we have the engineer design it, we don't look at modifying things, like kind of like we were talking with the last project. Okay. 
Um, everything that was originally in the master plan may not be needed. Um, we may, you know, save money here. Here and there. Yeah. Conversely, you're going to come up with problems like you just discussed, right? This extra pipe found on 12th Street and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. So that'll probably balance out. You it, it may, yeah. and then you have to spend more somewhere. So I, I don't think that what I said earlier, I don't, I don't think that the labor issue is going to get resolved in the time frame that you indicated. You think we could wrap the whole underground rehab project, get it done. You know, there's no miracles going to happen in the next two years. They're going to say, oh, yeah, we've got an oversupply of labor. So the only thing that could happen would be maybe some of the construction materials costs would start to level out a little bit and at least stay level but not continue think, to go up. I think steel and concrete have come down from when we bid 12th and 13th, okay. I would hope. And, yeah. and are we getting to take advantage of that? Because that's the challenge that I see is that, it, you know, everybody's really aggressive to raise the prices up when there's something to stand behind, like inflation, but they don't want to give it back as quickly. Yeah. So they try to hold on to it. So we just need to make sure that... So Colin, I'm just going back to build a timeline. So yeah. design three months, then permits how long? Uh, well, we gotta, you gotta put it out the bid. Um, that usually can turn around two months. We can have a, a bid reading and decide on a contractor. Um, at that point, it's going to be with this last project. It, it took three months to get things ordered to start. That's going to be a supply issue. So depending. permit and permitting should be able to get done easily within the time of ordering. We didn't have any problem with, with permitting. Three, six, nine. And then completion? I'd say what I mean, even though it's multiple projects, they're gonna have they're gonna have all their equipment out there and just go one to the next. I mean, I think one twenty is a good timeline. So you're talking 13, 14 months total. Is that yeah, that's yeah. Good, we just that, yeah. yeah. Ninety plus three or So I got three, three months for design, two months for bid. Let's go three months for permitting and ordering supplies, and then four months for completion. So five and seven. So 12 months. <coughs> so a year. Where to we complete been? five, four years. Yeah. It, for five years of projects, it's five yeah. separate. And if you look at where we're at now, we were funded for um, 17th and 18th this year, and we haven't even started design on it. Yeah. What's been the track record of things finishing early or on time or late? Um, the, as far as with the contract, what's the sign that there's in any of these projects, we haven't had a problem getting done. And, in the time now we got like with Hurricane Ian we gave them uh, like a couple of weeks you know basically they had to take their equipment out and put it back but they the current project right now if all goes well at this point they have until February 1 I think we calculated and they're, they're hoping to be done at the end of December so if it's I don't want to tell everybody that but yeah. that's what they like, told me yesterday so this isn't a government project or if the estimate is 12 months, it's really 24. Is <laughs> <laughs> that what you're saying? You mean the federal government, bro. Yeah. yeah, the federal government. <laughs> he and I know that very well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, once they get going, you know, you just try to stay out of their way and keep things moving. Yeah. You know. So, the, I mean, one potential downside that you'll have to be able to answer to is if you have half the city under construction at one time. Right. What does that cost for people? Well, it's different streets, so it's, it's really not. Yeah, I mean, you, the payoff is that you get it all done. Done quicker, mm -hmm. done. Right. and that's how you sell it. But that might be something that you would then have to address. Yeah, but 
if we're not impacting, I mean, they all, everybody wants it to start sooner. There isn't anybody that doesn't want you to tell them, but we're going to be able to start earlier. So I think everybody understands the benefits far outweigh the inconvenience, for sure. Yeah. But you're not going to have all of those streets under construction at the same time. No, they were, they were they're going to go in stages, somewhat exactly. like you've got a plan. So you're not you'll really, have, you'll have but it's going to be a you'll have a little bit of the start to finish. Yeah. They might yeah. current. Yeah, they so, might like with this. They might get the stormwater, um, all the pipe in the ground, you know, the inlets, do the curbing, and then kind of fill back in with millings on all these streets, and then then mill through and yeah, and then do all the paving like that. But once they've once they but that's pretty quick. Yeah, once they go once they've dug. And it's all open trenches, and they can use the same equipment to go start digging in another street mm -hmm. and lay the pipe. Right, and the the, the assumption behind saving on the uh, the uh, mobilization is that typical mobilization, you know, they're charging three to four days per project to get the equipment out there, and yeah. it, it's going to cut it down to like a day to just move it, if that. Mm -hmm. And that's just the labor and equipment needed to move. Yeah. Are there any issues with, you know, if somebody was scheduled to build a house, because I've noticed a couple lots have been cleared, and now we accelerate work on that street, and they can't construct the house because the work is going on in the street. Does that cause an issue? I, mean, I don't know. Just wonder, thinking through the problems. We haven't ran into it yet. I'm sure we could probably work around. You know, we have to work around day-to-day -day residents coming and going and we do pretty well. Yeah, I could foresee like it'd be a little bit more of a complication, but I think we could make it work. Yeah, I had a point. Yeah. Go ahead, Tom. And, and with the work around, you certainly will have a schedule that'll be published for all the residents to see. So they can make their plans ahead about future construction. Good yeah. point. Sure, sure. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and good you point. give them the time stream. Say this, this <clears> street <throat> is not yours during this period of time. So as you make your plans to build, just make sure that your needs are can be met right. in that time frame. And, and you know, the more notice you can give to somebody, the more powerful that is. Right. Definitely. Give them a heads up. And yeah. I'd see. I'd say. Right now, um, we got some projects. They could be wrapped up by then, about the 17th, with some empty lots. Um, I don't know of any new construction on 19th, 20th, at, at this point, where lots are getting cleared, and so. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, the, there's a lot of projects that have now been put on hold to the flippers who are out there buying everything up, mm -hmm. have now sort of disappeared. Um, and their, their plans aren't as, as, uh, I want to wait impressive. when you're finished. Let me no, know. I'm done. Go okay. Ahead. I want to weigh in about Duke Energy. <clears throat> in, in past meetings when we've had issues talking about the undergrounding projects on Gulf, it seems like we're at the mercy of Duke Energy and their, their subcontractors or whatever. Um, if this is all part of this bond issue and everything, and we get this bond issue approved and we start going forward, so on and so forth, what's going to, um, <clears throat> what guarantee are we going to have once we tell them it's a go? <clears throat> they're going to get started, and pardon the nautical term, not drag their anchor and be out there for two days and go away for three and then come back for two and go away for four. Because it seems like that's happened in the occurrences, you know, in me traveling Gulf Boulevard. You see them out there for a day or two and then they're gone. You know, if you're going to commit and going to pay somebody something, they need to commit and get, get it done. And I don't know where we stand on that leverage other than um, you give them a time frame as far as in the contract, I guess, and it should be penalty clauses. We're correct? 
<laughs> um, it's when you're talking Duke Energy, uh, I can. Our attorney looked over the, the agreement. Um, I know they have a lot of weight. Um, <laughs> And if there's any kind of emergency in the state, that's typically what's going to Well, that would take precedence. That I can understand. Yeah. Um, outside of that, I, I'm talking to them. I'm confident that they're not going to drag um, for the purpose of just not wanting to do it. Um, well, because the price is locked in now, right? The price if, is if, locked in. If they in. drag, then it's going to hit it's their It's going to hurt their, okay. Yeah. And Assuming we'll, prices go up. Yeah. 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 And I, th I think... I've heard too that in the past we've had a little bit of a problem with um, spectrum. Spectrum has been far more of a problem. Yeah. This last one. There's yeah. still they still have something across. They do. They still got from 12 North. Yeah. And who's someone's got? Doesn't look like a spectrum. It looks like a guy wire between the two poles. There's some guy around wires. 19th or in that they're, area. Yeah, they with said no they're, cables attached to it. They're, they're looking to take care of. Okay. Yeah, so I can okay. follow up on that. All right. Based on what you said, you know, um, you know, I would make the motion that we present this in a work session. To council, and let them see what they want to do. I think prior to that, um, John, you know, I think I probably need to do some homework and, okay. and, and break it up into what's stormwater okay. and what's capital. Okay. And then we can run the tests to make sure that they each qualify. Okay. Um, so I'm not worried about capital, I'm worried more about stormwater. Right. Okay. Because what is that? What's that annual revenue? 170. Mm, that sounds right. 175. Yeah. So that's it. We're, we're doing a lot of storm water here. Oh, yeah. So, okay. In your breakaway time, you're going to also come up with a plan of action for each. When we circle back, as right. far as the payoff is concerned, or is that not something that, that we discuss at this level? We just propose. Yeah, I think what we do is propose here's the sources and uses. Okay. And so the uses would be the payoff. Okay. Yeah. The budget of one seventy five for the assessments. Yeah. Okay. All right, that makes sense. And yeah. So that worries me. One seventy five. Because if, if stormwater only is getting one hundred seventy five thousand dollars a year, we've already got a small little budget. The bulk of this is stormwater, so I got to see if there's a way we can. Mm -hmm. uh, general obligation in the amount I have to mm -hmm. or can, can the city guarantee stormwater with non ad valorem? That's mm -hmm. basically, I think, where I need to see if we can go. Yeah. I mean, our budget, we have budget functions, is, yeah, the general fund is when we need it, it's moved over into the stormwater fund for everything to cover everything that's not in. Yeah, because again, it's just the way it works. We budgeted seven hundred thousand dollars this year, and right. we so, it, so what we're you're always saying budgeting is more. It can be moved over. Yeah, it, that's how. That's but how that to get the bond issue done, do we have to nail that number down? I need to make that? sure that we can pledge, and maybe you and Heather and I need to get on a call. Is okay. she going to be fine with you know, not ad valorem being pledged to support? Um, Store water. But if if the ability to do that is already on the books for us, yeah, that's it a, should be fine. The practice is, yeah, I think the city, but they need I think city council would agree to do it because they historically budgeted out of right traditional capital budget to yeah. fund store water projects. Right. But it's only store water. We only created this separate fund what two three years ago, right. so it's so it doesn't have it's, this it's much new, and, yeah. and we did that small bond issue with it, so. Okay. So we'll probably have at least one more meeting amongst ourselves. Before yes, we after you see if over the next um, 10 days or so we can get our information together and then have okay. another meeting. And I, don't, I don't know um, any kind of workshops for December. We did it first in January. I haven't heard anything in December that it could happen, but it's the holidays. Yeah. 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 I'd like us to be fully prepared to answer any of the questions. 
that the city council and citizens may have um, when, we, when we show it to them so that um, okay. there's no, we don't have to have another meeting or, or something else. Right. Obviously, they'll have to vote on it at some point, but at least we will have done everything we can to ensure that we brought them all the information. And if you guys think of any questions or whatever, ping them to Kyle, he can forward them to me. Okay. Um, any other general business the council wants to talk about? If, if that, I, sorry. Go ahead. Um, if any, if any of you guys do come up with possible questions council may have and there's more homework to be done, just email me directly. So I'm thinking, you know, at this point, not that I think it's a, a very good option right now, um, but I could lay out with um, like Swift Mud, Swift Mud, th they're giving funding if you do some sort of water treatment um, inside of your system when you're doing it. Um, I don't know. Would the filter inside my house same thing qualify? We, it would be the same thing as we did with the CDS units, uh -huh. but um, given the added cost of the project for that and then how much they're gonna yeah. contribute to the total, I still gotta work those numbers yeah. out of it. But if I start at least giving current options of what is available that is being looked at, and again, with any of these grants, anytime you apply for them, they're gonna require that we show that these projects are designed and budgeted for. So that you know you can, you can already start down that road and then apply to the grant. Right. You know, it actually makes it easier. Yeah. Um, with the resiliency grants, you got the brick program. They just opened up some ways to, to get closer to having the cost benefit ratio, but it again plays more into uh, communities with certain uh, at need. Demographics. That's where we struggle with demographics. Um, Do you need to lay out, when presenting this, do you need to lay out what the alternative if you if the council decides not to do this there's still a major shortfall right in all these projects so what is what then happens and what's the cost of that? what's the cost of that in terms of time, time in terms of money, money. and all that yep stuff? that's probably that's a good point I, I don't think anybody's going to vote against shortening the length of time to get the city 100 percent well we still need but, i mean it all depends on people's People weigh the cost, but I think mm -hmm. if, if I was on the council, I would want to hear, okay, you, I see your recommendation. What happens if we don't do that? What well, what are the other alternatives? My recommendation, if we do not do a bond issue, would be we're at least to combine the next two projects together mm -hmm. to, to get that done. Um, just to try and move things along, catch up sort of with our timeline. Because we're funded we're funded beyond um, where we're at right now, just to, you know what I mean, to try and save something and get and more done. Right, but then it catches up on with you later on, right? Because you're unfunded, you're, you have a shortfall. Well, you know, it just, it puts us more of um, being on a timeline when what, as soon as money is available that we just yeah. are using it. I would at least want to get to that point. Yeah. So we have to be able to speak to that intelligently, right. and you know, I like what, that. You know, what all filters through if they you make this the alternative, because yeah. as far as time and money, yeah. and right, and is the only inflation cost that increases, yeah. sure, it's yeah. going to happen. And is the only added expense to this whole project would be the interest on the bond. Really, really yeah, no, that's where if we can get some savings, right? If yes. it's where they're getting material and labor savings. That we pay for the other, interest so that with the, we can move the schedule up. There's no more out-of-pocket <coughs> money to get the job done. It's attractive sounding, for sure. Okay, hypothetical question two. Okay, let's assume council approves the bond issue. We, we're at the point now that we have a contractor. Is there enough space 
up there at um, the marina to where the contractor can buy material in advance so there's no delay in the supply line as he progresses. You know what I'm saying? I think the way they've done the projects and the use, the use of the right of way, they're not, once they start and they start ordering, they're going to be able to lay it out in the right of way. Oh, okay. They don't be running out of the store. So, yeah, you, so yeah. you don't get extra handling. It's true too, yeah. Uh, but I would okay. always open that up as an option. Okay. If they needed more space. All right. The other thing I wanted to point out about another meeting, just if we have one here in the next, next month, early January, <clears throat> I would not be available December 6th through the 8th and the second week of January. Both times I will be in Washington. I'm the national, you heard, probably heard uh, Councilman, um, I call him Captain Mike. Um, I am the national vice president of a veteran service organization now. And um, I'm supposed to be in Washington for uh, Pearl Harbor services, and then there's other issues that I and our national president are going to be dealing with at our headquarters. We're going to be up there all week in January. So just those two windows, okay. just to give you a heads up. Appreciate your leadership with the group, and we'll keep it in mind. Sure. Yeah. Okay. For sure. <coughs> Zoom you in. We'll do that too. It's you know, I hope to have a laptop by then. I don't have one yet. All right, so <laughs> homework, uh, we'll tighten up um, bringing up between capital projects and stormwater projects and probably have a conversation with the bank and probably look at the budgets, maybe thinking out future years, cash flow, excess cash flow, um, see if there's any way, you know, kind of what council might come back at, right. like, do we just fund this? Go ahead and get it all pre-approved, and we'll get it funded down the road. But okay, good. Tom, any other comments, questions? And along the line of uh, answering questions anticipated by the council in the work session, uh, if they ask what other alternatives to funding would, are out there, uh, whether it's uh, through grants and so forth, uh, I take it you have a ready answer for that. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to start putting together, getting the, the grant programs that are out there in the timelines and what actually reasonable uh, expectations we can have for those grants. Thanks. Great. Any other business? Anybody wants to talk about? Tom? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. All right. Adjourned.